Welcome to the first lesson in what will be a series of lessons on FL Studio. Today's lesson is a brief introduction that demonstrates how to choose the most efficient sound device for your audio, how to familiarize yourself with some of the menus and toolbars, how to open templates and preloaded content, and also how to simply save your project. To ensure that you're using the most efficient sound device for your audio content, we'll start by going to Options and Audio Settings. In the pop-up window, a drop-down menu will reveal all usable sound devices. Many of these may work, but you'll want to choose the device that will give you the least latency, which I'll explain in just a moment. You'd most likely want to choose a device here that has an ACO driver. If you installed ACO for All when installing FL Studio, you should see it listed here. And, if you don't have a better choice, choose it for now. If you don't have the ACO for All driver, you may download it for free from their site. Coming back to latency. Latency is simply the difference in the amount of time from when a sound is triggered, either by the software or a MIDI controller, to when it is actually heard. A high amount of latency will cause a significant and awkward delay. The properties under the Sound Device Selection menu show the latency of the device measured in milliseconds, as seen here with 10 milliseconds. Most sound devices will also have a panel for configuring the buffer rate, which in turn adjusts the latency. You want to strive for the lowest latency possible, but a setting that is too low will cause audio imperfections and glitches. For this lesson, I'm choosing my dedicated sound device for better performance. Once you've chosen the best sound device, you may find it helpful, and in later lessons, to open the menu structures and just see where things are located should you need them in the future. You can also mouse over some of the switches and buttons on the toolbars and transports to see what they control. If you look beneath the menus, you should see this area that shows you what a switch or button does, any keyboard shortcuts available for that function, and in some situations, a mouse graphic hinting that there is a right-click menu available for that particular switch or button that will reveal more options. Exploring these areas should help you get acclimated to the layout of FL Studio. To begin exploring some content, you can go to the File menu and find lots of content that comes preloaded with FL Studio. You'll find a template section under New from Template that offers templates loaded with certain samples. These can be basic, offering only a few samples to work with, like I have here, totally empty, or you can explore the genre section for templates loaded with samples from specific genres. To open some more choices, you can go to File, Open, and then you'll be greeted with a pop-up window that allows you to explore the folders of content. You will see some tutorials that offer more training using text pop-ups and preloaded content. There is also a folder for the same templates we saw earlier. Then there is a folder called Cool Stuff that contains some songs contributed by other artists that you can open, listen to, manipulate, or remix. These options should give you something to begin exploring and working with. Should your creative juices flow well and you want to save, you can save your project by going to File and then Save or Save As. In saving this way, you can later return to this project to continue working or explore other saving or exporting options that we'll discuss later. You can also use the Save New Version feature if you initially saved a project, reopened it, added more content to it, and now want to save a new version so as to have a record of your progress saved to separate project files. This option will append a number to the end of the original file name. So if your first version was named My Song, Save New Version would create a file called My Song 2. This concludes the introduction to FL Studio. Following these tips should give you a basic footing in the program and prepare you for the lessons to follow.